Well, I decided that the dolls needed some onion rings to go with those burgers we've been making. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is to make. All right, I put this up for a vote on my Facebook page and the onion rings got the most votes, so we are making onion rings this week. So we're gonna start out with any white polymer clay. I'm not even sure what brand this is. It's just some white clay that was sitting here. And we need some various sized round cutters. And my biggest one here is, let's make sure, it looks like about a three quarter, uh, this an inch? This is an inch. So we've got an inch one all the way down to, I think that's a 3 sixteenths of an inch. I just went through my bin of cutters and picked out the the round ones that were easiest to work with. We are, okay. I'd rather have it sit down, stay on the table, but it doesn't matter. And it's okay. Now if you don't have cutters, oh, by the way, it's okay if you don't get a full cut because you know, onion rings are sometimes not all completely there. Okay, pull those scraps off, we'll make some more. You could probably cut these circles out with uh, an X-Acto knife if you had to. Now we're going to take the next one down and we're going to cut a ring. And if they get bent, that's okay. Because, like I said, sometimes onion rings are bent. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes there's not a whole round. And now that's, this is the next one down. So we're going to cut. My next one down is this one. That was way off center, but like I said, doesn't matter. This is one that you don't have to be super, you know, like really ac perfectly accurate. And by the way, I rolled my clay through my pasta machine on the second setting, so it's the next to the, not the thickest, but the next down. You could easily roll this with a clay roller. And then for the last one, we're going to take, and this little piece is going to go into with the leftover clay and be re-rolled. We're not going to use the little centers. All right, so now, this paper plate has been used several times to do different baking projects. And these don't look like much now. I agree. They really don't. And I think they're more interesting if they don't stay perfectly round. If you smoosh some of them on the way to the plate, that's okay. They'll be more interesting. They'll make a, actually make a better looking batch of onion rings if they're not all perfect. You just don't want them laying on top of each other when you bake them. If by the time you get them to the oven, you've got them laying on top of each other, try to separate them out. Well, I am going to roll the rest of the clay back out. I'm going to cut as many onion rings as I can. And when I get them baked and cooled all the way, I'll come back and we'll move to our next step. All right, our little onion rings are baked and cooled, and I'm getting on some latex gloves so I don't get the next step all over my fingers because it's going to be messy. And like I said, it's fine if they don't stay round. In fact, I prefer them not totally round. Now, 
going to use the same paper plate. Put those over here where I can actually see them, though, so I don't misplace any. And I have sand. Now, this sand happened to come from the garden center. It's designed to go like in your potted cactuses. And a bag of this will last you like forever. And I need a small container. Let's see, I should have done that. I'll just use, how it's bringing it. See, I'll use it anyway. Same one I was using the other day. So I'm going to use this side. I have, you need some kind of a disposable container that you can work in and some gallery glass in amber. And I don't need it this strong, so I'm actually going to just put some water into it. I'm going to use tweezers and I'm going to use my fingers. And my tweezers and I kind of mix it around. Now, we're going to coat those sides. And this does wash off your hands. It is soap and water. It, it will wash off with soap and water while, before it dries. I just don't really like to get it all over my hands. You're going to coat these just like you would if you were, you know, like frying a piece of fish. You'd coat them with breadcrumbs. It's kind of what we're doing here. I don't want to leave the little bubble in the middle if I can avoid it, but sometimes it's going to. We want to coat both sides while they're still wet. And we can clean some of that out with a toothpick after it's dry, too. And sometimes it is just easier to use your fingers. And I am going to continue with the rest of these. I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to leave them on this plate of sand to dry. When they're dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, these are now dried overnight, actually. And we are going to now make them look a little more onion ringy and a lot less like sand. But we're And this is a two-step process because we have to do the sides separately. I tried to cut out a couple of steps on my uh, prototypes I made up before I did the video. And... Just I didn't like how they turned out. So once again, I am putting my amber gloss stain in there, and I'm putting some water on it, and I've got a soft paintbrush. Because I don't want the glass stain quite as thick as it comes out of the bottle. Now, I have a glove on this hand, because I'm going to paint with this hand and do this. And this paint is water-soluble. It will wash off. I just don't like to get it on my skin. Um, I find it washes off just fine, but I find I can smell it on my hands all day long. And I don't like the smell of this stuff. It's got a weird smell. And that would be my son's cat. I'm not sure why he's yelling at me. So I'm going to paint on just the top side. And when these are dry, I'll come back and I'll show you the first couple painting on the other side and then they'll be done. So I'm going to continue painting these. When they're dry I'll be back and we'll go to the next step. Alright, so this has had some time to dry so I'm going to move my tray of sand out of my way now and we are going to, oops, that's just a piece of sand. together. And we just have to do basically the same thing on the other side. And I tried to do a shortcut on one set of these when I was kind of coming up with the project. And I and that was the shortcut was I was trying to dip them like I did before. And I found that I just made a mess. That really didn't work well for me. So I bet you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the same thing. There's my brush. Squirt more of this in here. Squirt in some water. I'm actually going to use the handle of my brush. Don't forget to wash your brush right after you get done because you don't want this stuff drying in your brush. Now, 
poke out any excess stuff there, kind of up, and I'm going to paint the back side. But I don't want to get more paint on the bottom. I don't want to get too much on because then it could pool and look not very good. Basically, on this coat, I'm just coating any white sand that's still showing on my onion rings. When I get all done with this and these get dry, I will come back and we'll look at the finished onion ring. Alright, so these are dry. The top side always looks better than the back side. Um, but there are the onion rings for the dolls. I think they are going to enjoy these along with those burgers we've been making. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Be sure and check the blog post. I'll have better pictures over there than I can put on the uh, video. If you haven't found my Facebook page, be sure and check the link in the description box for that and come join the fun over there. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.